Hello and welcome to a serious talk presented by the Manatee. I'm your host, Paul Lewis. Our guest today is David Kuhn, who is in politics. Should be a fun one. David, thank you for being here. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How was your day today? What do you have for breakfast? Uh, good question. I didn't have breakfast. That's not a good thing to do, David. No, I did have breakfast. What do you have? I bought some uh, yogurt with muesli, whatever that is. Must be nice to not have to worry about your health. <laughs> so, David, thanks for inviting us to your office here. Not quite as nice as the premiers. I've been there, you know. Uh, I saw the video. I have been there, actually. So you guys chose to have this. I was going to say, like, I don't mind springing uh, for a Keurig machine or something like that. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll work it out after. Okay. All right. What do you do exactly? I ask myself that regularly, you know. Uh, so, what do I do? I, as the MLA, I have a number of jobs. So, I know that part. I know what your, your title is and stuff, but I want to know what you actually do, right? Because right now, liberals are in power, right? My boy Brian, he's running the show, doing a great job. Keep it up, Brian, right? So, after that, like, Brian can't do this forever, right? He's probably going to retire, maybe get a modeling gig, acting gig, who knows? Sky's the limit for that guy. Maybe run for prime minister, right? My point is, eventually, he's going to leave. Let's be honest, conservatives are probably going to win, right? And they're going to rule for a while. They're going to get kicked out, liberals back in, because it's basically a two-party system, right? So where does that leave you? So you're missing the important part, which is democracy. So explain that to me. Well, so we gather in the legislative assembly, people propose laws. Sometimes it's the government, sometimes it's the official opposition, sometimes it's the third party, which would be me in the legislature. And then we debate the laws, we have votes, and then laws pass or they don't pass. So I'm not really following. Explain it to me like I was four. Okay, I won't do that because, you know, I, 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 imagining you as a four-year-old, it's painful, <laughs> actually. So what does an MLA do? What does an MLA do? So an MLA uh, represents their constituents in the Legislative Assembly, participates in debates, makes laws, and provides oversight on how government is spending the public money. Okay, that sounds pretty boring. Um, so you knew all that beforehand. Like, what made you get into politics? You lose a, like, you drop out of college or something? <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. Um, no, I, uh, I felt like democracy was slipping away from us, politics were broken, that we needed to make a change. Okay, so you're the leader of the Green Party, is that correct? That would be it. Okay, so let's talk about the name for a bit, Green Party, okay? It's great, isn't it? Well, to me, it's not so great. Like, when I hear the word Green Party, right, when I hear that term, oh, yeah. I picture... Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I, oh, I yeah. picture... Sorry. Go ahead. I picture a bunch of hippies just sitting around a room, right? You do. Drinking organic smoothies. What about Yoda? Wearing tie-dye shirts, listening to the dead, and smoking weed all day. Is that what you guys do, or do you just save that stuff for the weekend? We just watch that stuff on Netflix. So where are you guys with the marijuana legislation? Are you pro or against it? We dealt with four bills on the Legislative Assembly. So um, I voted for three of them and against one of them. In layman's terms, I guess, are you pro-legalization? Legalization, yes. You heard it here. David Kuhn thinks the Liberals are doing a fantastic job. Right. I appreciate you saying that, David. Well, they stole it you. from the Greens, of course, the idea of legalization. <laughs> Just saying. David, are you a hippie? Do I look like a hippie? Uh, do you make your own clothing, soaps, any of that stuff? I mean, you don't look like a hippie today. I assume that they, they don't uh, allow tie-dye in the legislation building. No, in fact, you have to wear a suit with a tie. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of, as my brother says, a B-flat suit. So he's a jazz musician. So, What do you do in your free time, David? Sleep. Sleep? Make your own clothing? Mostly. <laughs> Mostly it's sleeping. What do you think about annoying reporters? Do you ever want to push that Jacques Portier guy right down the stairs? <laughs> Jacques is a, a great journalist, indeed. Very diplomatic of yeah. you. Yeah. David, I've heard that your party wants to lower the voting age to 16. Now, is that because you guys think that 16-year-olds are naive and they don't know much about politics, so they might <laughs> throw a vote your way? No, not it's, knowing that it's a two-party system. Uh, no, it's because it's and it's not a two-party system. But no, that's debatable. Because because 16-year-olds. One, are old enough to vote, participate in elections. They what were you doing when you were 16, They're mature David? enough 
to do that while I was driving a car, for one thing, um, and I was paying attention to politics for another. So uh, that's one. I was trying to find ways to make out with my girlfriend. It's, uh, there's that, too. That's but, all I was doing. But uh, you should have you know, broadened out a bit. But anyway, and the other thing is, you know, the evidence is that if you start voting at 16, then you're going to stay more engaged in the democratic process through time. Because when you're 16, you're sort of, you're living, for most people, in a stable situation. You're living at home with your parents, you're in high school, so there's all kinds of opportunity to discuss, debate about the election before you cast your vote. You on Facebook, David? I am. Okay, so Bri, he said something weird, like, you know, our relationship was too special to post on Facebook or whatever, right? So he didn't want to be my friend, but because I sent you a friend request a couple days ago and you haven't responded to it yet. Um, yeah, this is, this is awkward because I, I definitely saw it and um, sort of uh, made a decision. And um, ultimately we find ourselves with the decision I made about the friend request. So it's sort of awkward, Paul. I'm not really sure what to say about this. Like if I sent you a request? I accept everyone. Well, that doesn't make me feel special at all, David. Well, I wasn't trying to make you, make you feel special. Right. Well, David, that's all the time we have uh, for today. I really, really Darn. appreciate you being here. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Uh, it was great having you on the show, though. All nice right? talking to you, Paul. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This has been a serious talk presented by the Manatee. I'm your host, Paul Lewis. And remember, it's not really a talk unless it's a serious one. Take care, everyone.